to make her own. You can like move around and get them. Okay, okay. Great hat. Thank you. Forget crisis is Hey, you're incredible. Awesome performance. Thank you. This was a fantastic show. Feels great. Heartbreaker. <laughs> so, um, we thought you were getting married and it's over. What I know, happened? I don't know what happened. It just didn't work out. I don't know. It was like, he wouldn't come he, up with the ring? Or? He got kind of weird. How long did you talk to him? You improved. What? How long did you talk to him? I don't know, maybe a couple hours. And, and, but then it got weird at the end. Yeah. What happened? Got you some uh, southern bells. Where was that, that guy? Visible. That guy messed it up for right. me. What's um, up? Ran away. I don't know. Oh my god, he kind of flipped <laughs> Yeah, oh, he was like flipping them off. It's kind of like another man. Animosity uh, towards them. Up? So, yeah. Is there a microphone? You know, I happens. Back, but, I have to be, uh, but you're over it? Yeah, I'm moving so, on to the next phase yeah. of my life. Just you know. Uh, <laughs> you can hear me. They are. To get something going like you. Alright, cool. So, uh, what would you like to do When it crashed, I had to... <laughs> oh, do you need to log in again? No, you, I got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So how many performances of the Laptop Ensemble done in the last, whatever, six weeks or whatever it's been? I say five. Isn't that right? A semester? About five. Or? Yeah. And, and you guys formed in... in 2012? In the fall of 2011. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. And many of the same players have continued. It's like, it's like having a band. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, we have yeah. sets and play. Very awesome. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you for having us, Gwen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very yeah. much. Definitely an eclectic evening. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Okay, right here. Oh, she looks beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> How's it going? Well, it's not completely buffering everything, so I don't know. Like that's oh, it's like you have like a crappy connection. It's like only buffered to there. Mm. So we'll just see what we get. She's slow logging. Is it still moving or is it at a standstill? Just slowly. Some are better than others. What are you talking about? Oh. I'm your camera person for tonight. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's willing to lend a helping hand. <laughs> Yeah, it's time for our Lexus commercial. Fun. <laughs> I said fun. Fun. Okay. Chris Schumacher and Gracie Kendall and Chris Schumacher together. Oh, except we have to wait for the Lexus commercial, I guess. Oh. Okay. Then we'll be ready.
Come on over. Shh. Sunday, May 6, 2012, 8 a.m. So last night after my big opening, I came home and took off my makeup, sat in front of the computer just decompressing. It was a huge night for me. The show was a great success. It was a whirlwind evening. It was wonderful. I kept thinking how good it felt to take off that makeup that I was wearing, that 1920s makeup. Brushing out my hair. Right now, and it'll say, oh, they're talking about it on CNN. It was amazing. chin is outrageously huge. My nose, oh my god, my nose. What must people think of me when they look at me? How can I be accepted as an important artist looking like me? How can I be accepted as a woman? A woman? What would it, why would anyone date me? Has my perception of beauty been so distorted so much because of advertising or past experiences that I can't see my own beauty? I just don't know right now. Oh my god, look at the, my roots. My hair, I look like a skunk. Oh, why do we get, and why do we go through so much pampering and prepping and spending money to look beautiful, or try to anyway? Why do I get my hair done? Because especially blonde. Well, Gracie's blonde, Chris is blonde. Is it to try to look and feel like her, especially here in Southern California? Going blonde is all too common here. Why, is it the symbolism, you know, blonde bombshell, um, blondes have more fun, or maybe the ditzy blonde, which is probably more like me. Well, that may be only that may only be me. Um, maybe I'll shave my head, possibly. We put so much power in our hair and our physical appearance to try to look beautiful. For what? To impress guys or girls, depending on which way you go. Why? How do we impress? Our, why don't we impress ourselves? Of course, we want to look good, but why do we? do it to please others? Why don't we do it to please ourselves? Especially when most of the others, <clears throat> excuse me, most of those others only want someone who's beautiful. I have found that beauty is only skin deep. You can be extremely beautiful and thin on the inside, but a total bitch on the, I'm sorry, <laughs> beautiful and thin on the outside, but a total bitch on the inside. What is the appeal? Sometimes I feel okay about it. I feel good about myself. Well, okay, not necessarily about my body. But my personality, character, wit, intelligence, etc. Then I look in the mirror and I see a whole other person staring back. Then I look in the computer screen and I look at Gracie and I see me. I see the real me. Hmm. I love this quote that I found. Quote, I say fat, I stay fat because it just would not be fair to all the other thin people out there if I were this good looking, intelligent, funny, and thin. End quote. Monday, May 7, 2012. 2 p.m. I had a huge bowl of mint brownie and chocolate chip ice cream. I have an eating distor disorder. Did I say I have an eating disorder? Well, I do. I binge on ice cream. I don't know why. It's something I'm working through in therapy. I want to stop or slow down or find a balance. Like, you know, like everything is, like everything, it's all about balance. I feel so listless and weak after eating like this. I'm tired and I just don't feel like doing anything. I feel so unmotivated. I'm afraid of dying. I feel invisible sometimes. Why do people not look at me? Is it because of my looks? Because they can't stand to look at me? Am I ugly? Why do I get more attention in second life? Well, I mean, well, I do, you know, sit with guys sometimes. Well, okay, kind of. Why don't I get hit on more in real life? I'm the same person, am I? Seriously, why not? If I'm the same person, acting the same, just as witty and intelligent, why don't guys hit on me in real life? 2.45 p.m. I just threw out the half gallons of ice cream I had left in the freezer. I feel 
like I can start fresh tomorrow. I won't need any more. I can do this. At least this is what I tell myself every time. 7 p.m. We have a friend who keeps asking me why I'm asking me if I'm dating him. Of course I'm not. Who wants me? No one. I hear guys talking about beautiful women all the time. These guys have trophy wives and girlfriends. I guess I should be happy I'm not put on a pedestal like that. But sometimes I want to be. I want to be adored and wanted and loved by a guy. No one wants me. Have you seen me lately? I weigh 240 pounds. I'm huge. I'm fat. I'm tired of being unwanted. There's a great meme that went around Facebook. The quote was, yes, I'm single. You're going to have to be amazing to change that. Why can't I believe this? I think it's an amazing statement. It's so true. I won't settle for less. Why can't I trust this? There's another article that a friend shared with me recently. It's called Fat and Fucking by Rebecca Jordan. And it reads, I slept with a good friend several, several years ago. It was recreational and a little reckless, but the hows and whys and breakdowns aren't important. I want to tell you about what he said to me after we'd spent several blissful, hilarious hours together being naked and happy. <clears throat> we lay there chilling out and smiling up at the ceiling in silence. I've never been with a girl like you, he said in a friendly but hesitant voice. You see big people, but I guess I just didn't. I mean, you feel really good. I guess you just never know what, what's under people's clothes. It's taken me a long time to figure out exactly what he was trying to tell me, in the moment especially. I turned away so he couldn't see my burning cheeks, muttered some vague agreement, and, didn't, and did the old fat shame shuffle as quickly and efficiently as I could. Us, us fat kids know the dance step well. You're busy being you, and then somebody reminds me that you're not you, you're fat you. You remember that fat is a bad thing. You let the shame well up inside you, and then you push the shame down and continue with whatever it was that you were doing with your life. I think my friend's unprecedented trip to fat sex land blew his mind in a good way. At the time, he was trying to put this sexy paradigm shift into words. He was starting to realize the very thing that I knew intellectually at the time, but he <clears throat> couldn't quite believe about himself and other fat people, that we are sexual, and that our bodies are not wrong, and that we have the same right and access to pleasure and happiness as that in everyone else. Love your body. If you loved someone, you put up with your, their shortcomings and try to do things to make them happy. You care about their health and their safety and their quality of life. Loving your body doesn't mean that you have to think your body is perfect. It doesn't even mean that you have to make peace with your body. But if you do, do want to do sexy stuff, you and your body need to be on the same team. On some level, you have to have goodwill towards your body. If you hate your flesh, you'll probably find ways to punish or ignore it. You'll never allow good things to happen to it. There are some fat people out there for whom positive body image comes naturally, and others who have fought hard for years to shed the shackles of body negativity. Most of us still struggle with various degrees of body shame, denial of, the, of our physical sex selves, and our hang-ups and insecurities about our appearance. All those emotional struggle, struggles are also common to people who don't identify as fat, and they can be an incredibly daunting battle for anyone. 7.45 p.m. I told my therapist a couple weeks ago that when something isn't going right, I try to think about it and change my perspective, my perception. I guess it's kind of like a paradigm shift in a way. I have to stop thinking about what other people think of me. Who cares what they think? I have to think about what I want, focus on me. I read somewhere that I should live as if. I, if, I, if I live as if I'm beautiful, or as if I'm confident, or as if I'm talented, I will be. If I see these traits in me rather than the negative traits, or <clears throat> excuse me, I will see these traits in me rather, rather than the, the negative traits. What if I live as if I was rich? 8.18 p.m. Gracie's dancing with some friends in Second Life. The party is for this great guy she's known for years. These people are wonderful. I've never met them in the physical world, but they're as real to me as if I could reach out and touch them. I've known a few of them for many years now. We have been through so much, and they know me and accept me for who I am. They know Gracie is Chris and Chris is Gracie. I don't hide who I am. I don't role play. On that topic, my brother told me he didn't think I was myself on Saturday night for my opening. He thought I was playing a role. 
That is really interesting, considering I felt more like myself when I took off the makeup, when I brushed my hair. It's also interesting, the idea of makeup and the mask, the avatar as a mask. My friend Jackie commented on my show this Saturday night. She said, an avatar is an avatar is an avatar. I love that. Very Gertrude Stein meets Second Life. I am an avatar of my own existence. I am an avatar of my avatar. I am a rose. The end. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and now, back to the laptop ensemble.